Hello, my name is Alex Ghazi and I am the head of the Abu Dhabi office of Al-Tamimi and Company Law Firm. This short video is part of the project Children of Tomorrow, whereby we try to look at children's rights in the UAE, highlighting the legal consequences if a child is harmed or is victim of a crime. For example, what should teachers or staff who had regular contact with children do if they find signs of abuse? Are there authorities they can report to, hotlines or any specific actions required? How can they handle situations where a child accesses inappropriate cyber material shared on internet, social media, WhatsApp, etc.? For the purposes of the discussion of this video, we first need to establish that as per UAE law, a child child is defined as any human being up to the age of 18. Without further ado, it gives me great pleasure to turn this discussion over to Hassa, who is a student at Just School in Dubai, and she will introduce our first topic. Hassa? Thank you, Alex. I'm here with Meta, a litigation lawyer from Al Tamimi and Company Law Firm. Meta, what legal protection is there for children in UAE? There are several federal laws that protect and safeguard children, and the main one is the Child Law of 2016. I am now joined by Amna from the TMT department at Alta Mimi and Company Law Firm. Amna, what does the child law say? The child law is a legislation issued solely to address the rights of children in the UAE. It sits alongside and connects other federal laws in the UAE which relate to children matters, such as the employment law, juvenile law and criminal law. So the child law sets out the objectives that the UAE authorities hope to achieve for every child, including the right to a safe life, the right to freedom, the right to development and the right to protection from abuse and negligence. The law expands on the necessity of educating children about their rights under UAE law and emphasises the principles of tolerance, equality and justice. The law expands on the necessity of educating children about their rights under the law and emphasises the principles of justice, equality and tolerance. No discrimination is allowed by any means for race, gender, religious beliefs and social status. Ladies, what do teachers and students need to know about this law? Education is one of the most vital and key issues in a child's life. Apart from home, children spend most of their time in schools, so it is very important to make sure that the time is well spent in developing children to their fullest potential. In one way or another, most of the rights that we will be talking about involve schools and the time children spend there. Whether these rights are related to social, uh, health issues, safety or educational, or reporting incidents of abuse or threats. The law emphasizes the child's right for education, and the United Arab Emirates provides equal chances for all children living in the UAE. The law also imposes certain obligations on teachers and school staff such as reporting which we will discuss later and therefore it is important that teachers and school staff should be familiar with these laws and regulations as well as any relevant school policies. The law notes that the UAE is to take certain measures in regard to education such as involving parents in decisions concerning children, prohibiting all forms of violence, ensuring the development of each child mentally, physically, socially and ethically and developing programs and institutions specifically designed to receive complaints or reports in relation to any violation of children's rights. Amna, are there any UAE laws to protect children from cyberbullying? In a nutshell, Alex, while there are general laws that are relevant to cyberbullying, such as the Penal Code, the UAE Cybercrimes Law is a comprehensive legislation that governs crimes that occur on all electronic platforms, such as the internet, WhatsApp, Facebook and phones, and provides for severe penalties. For example, it provides for jail and a maximum fine of 500,000 dirhams for anyone who insults or slanders a third party online. It also provides for jail and a fine for any person who assaults someone's privacy online, such as by publishing any means of publicity, news, pictures or comments, even if they are correct or real. The UAE traditionally considers defamation to be a serious criminal offence. The cybercrimes law even prohibits the act of blackmailing or threatening to bully someone. So what happens if somebody takes a photo of a child or misuses a photo of a child without the parent's consent? Cyberbullying can be and often is undertaken by using images of the victim in a way that is not authorized or without their consent. This could include images taken of the victim with the consent of the type but on the understanding of confidentiality. Or images may have been provided as a result of persistent bullying behavior. For example, if you don't give me the photos, I will tell everyone that you in the United Arab Emirates, using images without consent is a serious crime. The child law prohibits acts related to child pornography, including production, distribution, possession, and downloading. 
the penalty for producing and publishing such content is a minimum term of 10 years imprisonment. For possessing and downloading such content, it is a punishment of a minimum of one year imprisonment or a fine up to 400,000 dirhams. The cyber crimes law also prescribes harsh penalties for any use of material that is considered to be pornographic. So if, for example, a teenager threatened to bully or defame a fellow student unless they provided a sexual image of themselves, then not only are they guilty of inciting contempt, receiving and distributing pornography and child pornography, but they are also guilty of blackmail. Abuse of children is a very serious offence and the UAE laws have zero tolerance towards such acts. There are very severe penalties under the criminal law governing such cases. So Amna, how do I prevent a child from accessing inappropriate content online? Alex, from a practical point and generally speaking, websites showing obscene materials are prohibited and blocked in the UAE. So the risk of this occurring is very unlikely. The danger comes if you have a VPN installed on your home computer. You must be sure to disable it if a child is using the computer at home. However, whether it is in the UAE or abroad, there are a lot of means to protect a child from having access to such materials. This requires supervision by parents and blocking indecent sites. You should also report such websites to the authorities. Communications companies and internet providers are required under the child law to notify the relevant authorities of any child pornography exchanged through websites. It is very important to educate children both in school and at home on how to use the internet and social media in a beneficial and safe way and to explain that some websites are illegal and simply should not be used. We are now joined by Major Abdurrahman Tamimi from the Ministry of Interior Child Protection Centre. Major Abdurrahman, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, we have an important question for you. What do I do if I suspect a child is being abused or mistreated? That's an excellent question and the, uh, the answer is very important. Uh, everybody in the community and society is required by law to report child abuse or suspicion of child abuse. The Ministry of Interior has looked at the child protection as a very crucial matter and uh, in doing so it established the Child Protection Centre in 2011 as a unit dedicated to protecting children uh, all over the country. You can reach the Child Protection Center if you are going to report uh, child abuse or suspicion of child abuse. You can reach the center through the hotline, which is 116-111. Also, you can reach us through the email, uh, childprotection at moi-cpc.gov.ae. And another mean is the uh, Child Protection Center website, where you can go on and uh, log in your complaint or suspicion. And the last will be the smart app, Himayati, that was released on the 15th of March this year. Um, and the app is, is a means or a, a channel for reporting child abuse and child, uh, child mistreatment. Anybody can download this app from uh, the app stores on any smartphone and they can report any abuse or suspicion of abuse. And uh, the app also at the same time, it protects the uh, identity of the reporter and the victim and it's dealt with uh, uh, discreetly through the police forces all over the country. Aisha, are there obligations on teachers or schools to report suspected abuse? Yes, if a teacher or school staff or any person notice signs of abuse, they need to report it. The child law specifically provides that anyone who realizes that there is a threat to a child's safety or health, whether physically or mentally, can report it to the child protection specialist or one of the child protection units established under this law. However, this reporting is compulsory to people entrusted with taking care of children and professionals working with the children, such as teachers, doctors, and special workers. So generally speaking, when professionals note serious threats, illegal activities, or any change of usual or normal attitude of any child they work with, they must report it or seek advice. If in doubt, it is best to report these to the relevant child protection units who should be able to address the issue with the required level of cautiousness. Uh, Major Abdurrahman, what happens if a, a report is filed in good faith but without any um, evidence? Well, to answer your question, first we have to touch on a very important point. Uh, collection of evidence is not the burden of the reporter. So when you report a crime, you're not supposed to be producing evidence because that's the, do uh, the role of the police. So whoever reports uh, child abuse or suspicion of child abuse, it is taken on good faith. And we consider that as a, as a report that we have to deal with and it's turned into the police force in charge and they collect the evidence related to the case or the matter. If we realize that this uh, report was not correct, we consider it good faith, it was given in good faith and there's no prosecution for the person reporting because we want to encourage everybody to report child abuse 
or suspicion of child abuse if we scare people off by telling them that you know you have to produce evidence which is not their job to do then nobody will report child abuse or child mistreatment um, now, why are we not allowed to sit in the front seat of our cars? This is because the child law says that children under the age of 10 are not allowed to sit in the front seat of any vehicle for their own safety. So to summarise, if anyone suspects any child is either being abused in any way or a victim of a crime, they must as soon as possible notify the special children units in any police station or call the Ministry of Interior hotline 116 111 or send an email to the following email address which appears at the bottom of the screen. Finally, I would like to extend special thanks to the UAE leaders for their care and support to this cause, to Major Abdurrahman Al-Tamimi from the Ministry of Interior, Child Protection Center, for his presence and help, to the relevant government agencies and authorities, to my dear guests, Maytha, Amna, Khalid, and especially Hassan for her lively presence, and to all those who contributed and helped us put this short video together and support our project, Children of Tomorrow.